Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley campaigned in Iowa this past weekend. She spoke to a crowd of conservative Christians alongside GOP candidates Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy. The trio spoke about being pro-life. They also discussed foreign policy and their faith. Haley is moving up in the polls on the back of strong debate performances. She is still a far distance away from the current frontrunner, former President Donald Trump. And joining us now is Susan Crabtree, White House and National Political Correspondent at Real Clear Politics. Susan, good to be with you. Uh, a lot to get to, but first, let's talk a little more about Nikki Haley, uh, as we said, who is moving up in the polls. Why do you think she's resonating with voters? Well, I think that they found her um, quite articulate, and it depends on um, carving up the Republican Party. You have uh, an Emerson poll, college poll, came out last week that showed that Donald Trump really has New Hampshire wrapped up. Uh, 49 percent, he's attracting 49 percent of the vote there. But Haley showed momentum. Uh, Nikki Haley set, showed that she got garnered about 18 percent of the vote, while DeSantis was down from 10 percent earlier to 7 percent. Uh, so you actually have Nikki Haley moving ahead in that particular state, and that matches the real clear politics numbers we have almost exactly. So the thing that is, is she is carving out the center lane. With DeSantis unable to seem to carve into Donald Trump's big lead, you have sort of the center lane all to herself, and she's shown her to be a fighter uh, in these debates. Her debate performances have been really stellar, and she also has taken a more nuanced view on abortion, uh, which, as we've seen uh, nationally, is a mixed bag. Um, the American public, uh, the way they feel about abortion in Ohio, just wanting um, voting just in November 2nd to for greater access to abortion in Ohio. And Nikki Haley has certainly tried to carve out that more, on, more nuanced view, with saying she is pro-life and she would like to see more pro-life policies out there adopted in states, but the debate uh, to have it in the states, have this debate in the state is the right place for it to have to be taking place. Yeah, and Susan, while she is, you know, making pretty big gains, uh, there is no question uh, that the candidate to beat is former President Donald Trump, who really is leading by a wide margin. Uh, this, despite him not taking part in any of the debates and those legal woes too, um, you know, at this point, it seems he is the GOP candidate. So I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, as we go in, we have a few more debate opportunities. DeSantis has a big debate after Thanksgiving with Governor Newsom that she's sort of unpredictable, and uh, we'll see how he comes out from that, whether he can build some momentum. And then you have an early December debate. Um, and then you have, immediately in January, you are going to have this this presidential primary kick in with Iowa, New Hampshire. And if they cannot, if the only thing I can see is if Donald Trump underperforms in Iowa, New Hampshire, and DeSantis or Haley overperforms, then we can say they have some more momentum going into Super Tuesday. But if Donald Trump is able to keep those numbers really high and have its 20 points ahead, uh, it's a done deal for Donald Trump. So time is a wasting. And Nikki Haley herself was talking about that today, saying we're at the 60-day mark, and it's critical, to, crucial time period for both underdogs. Yeah. Uh, also, another poll uh, out today, a new Harvard Caps Harris poll, uh, showing former President Donald Trump leading President Biden 48 to 41 in a hypothetical 2024 general election. Susan, what do you attribute this gain to? Well, it's interesting. I, I do think that you've seen uh, the president's poll numbers drag. He's at his lowest point in his presidency right now. 59% uh, disapproval, only 40% approving. A lot of that, I think, has to do with the war between Israel and Hamas and how he's uh, how he's orchestrated that and how he's handling that. A lot of young people are, are taking issue with the way um, he has is dealing with it. They think he's too pro-Israel. Uh, it's an interesting because he won Donald Trump with the young people from 18 to 39, that age group, by 20 points in 2020. And now he's down um, among those groups against Donald Trump. So uh, unless something happens to shift that, it's going to be a problem for the Democratic Party, and it's a real wake-up call. Susan, we have maybe 30 seconds left or so, but final thoughts. Yeah, well, I think you saw a lot of people. It's it's a president's birthday today, so we want to send happy birthday to him. But it's a difficult time for him. And I, I think you have David Axelrod, someone who's very close and influential, close to Obama, uh, Obama advisor, saying that there's only a 50-50 percent 
a chance for Joe Biden right now as we look to the presidential to general election next year. So it's a real, um, it's a difficult time for the president. His poll numbers are not looking good, and the Democratic Party needs to decide what to do. And they only have this uh, this next two months really before the presidential campaign kicks into high gear. Susan, appreciate your time as always. Thanks for weighing in. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks for having me.